I'd like to start out with some feedback on our previous segment's forum discussion question. According to the California Dental Board, a dentist may use any legally prescribed drugs to treat patients as long as the treatment is within their scope of practice. There is a specific code that stipulates only licensed maxillofacial surgeons who have an elective facial cosmetic surgery permit can inject Botox for cosmetic purposes, but not general dentists. Okay, let's move on to the roles and responsibilities of patients, families, and or caregivers. Now that we've learned about the training, roles and responsibilities, and scope of practice of healthcare providers, let's turn our attention to finding out about the roles and responsibilities of patients, their families, and or caregivers in managing their own health care. Additionally, we will look at ways in which the healthcare system can facilitate patient-centered care. The Institute of Medicine defines patient-centered care as being a partnership among practitioners, patients, and their families or caregivers to ensure that decisions respect patients' wants, needs, and preferences, and that patients have the education and support they need to make decisions and participate in their own care. Successful healthcare requires an ongoing collaborative effort between the patient and healthcare provider. Good communication is essential to successful patient healthcare provider relationships. To the extent possible, patients have a responsibility to be truthful and to express their concerns clearly to their healthcare provider. Once the patient and healthcare provider agree upon the goals of therapy and a treatment plan, to the extent possible, the patient has a responsibility to engage with the treatment plan, keep agreed upon appointments, and to indicate when they would like to reconsider the treatment plan. However, extenuating circumstances can make it difficult for a patient to actively engage with their provider, such as when facing financial challenges, having competing demands from work or family, or being able to understand and follow a complex regimen. We will now hear from a patient whom you met in the first module. He has type 2 diabetes and will talk about the role of the patient in the management of his health. Um, if my healthcare professionals were a team, and how would I describe my role on the team? I would say my role would be to learn as much as possible, to really be a sponge and just try to absorb as much knowledge as I, as I could, uh, to learn about the disease and to also uh, learn how to manage it, um, because I've got people who are really experts in the field. Um, I heard early on that you wanted to become your own doctor when you have diabetes, kind of quote unquote, become your own doctor. Um, because there are many situations when you need to make corrections. Either you're, you want to have your blood sugar levels in a certain range, and you, you don't want to be too high or too low. And if you find yourself being too high or too low, you need to make a correction, and you, you need to know how to do that. Um, and so through the care that I, I received, I learned about diabetes and how to manage it and how to do that. So I became kind of, quote, unquote, my own doctor. Um, and it was really through the knowledge that I got from the team that I was able to, uh, to do that. Well, for future healthcare professionals, for them to know what the role is of a patient, I would say would be that the focus of the team should be the patient. Uh, because without a patient, there is no team. They're, 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 the patient is a reason why the team is together. And I think that the, uh, the team should try to empower the, the patient as much as possible with as much knowledge uh, as possible so they can um, manage the disease uh, as well as they can. As the number of adults with chronic illness increases, the family or caregiver plays a critical role in improving the health processes and outcomes. It's the family or caregiver who provides the daily setting for patient management, including transportation, assistance with the activities of daily living, managing complex medication schedules, and even setting the social environment to improve the quality of life. Therefore, it is very important to understand different cultural beliefs and approaches towards health. In shared decision-making, both the patient and clinician share information, participate in the decision-making process, and agree upon the best strategy for treatment. The clinician provides personalized information, tools, and decision aids to help the patient understand the available treatment options and encourages the patient to consider his or her personal values in making treatment-related decisions. Shared decision-making between healthcare providers, patients, and if they so choose their family or caregivers accommodates the differences in patient preferences, which may change over time, including at the end of life.
Please visit the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality website listed on this slide for toolkit and decision aids on shared decision making. The healthcare system itself can be designed to enhance the patient's partnership with the healthcare provider and team. Systems improvements can increase opportunities for patient participation, empowering patients to take an active role on their healthcare team, ensuring patients timely access to care when it is needed or wanted and with the clinician they choose has been shown to improve patient satisfaction. Receiving care from multiple healthcare providers can be frustrating for patients when the care between the settings is not well coordinated. Healthcare teams that include a specific care coordinator whose role focuses on helping the patient navigate the system and ensures that handoffs between settings go smoothly improve patient satisfaction and safety. Patient access to care does not have to be only a face-to-face -face encounter with a clinician. In fact, utilizing multiple types of patient access, such as telephone, email, telehealth, access to patient electronic health records, and drop-in visits have been observed to improve patient-centered care by taking into account patient preferences. Improving patient self-management of their health requires expanding the patient's network of support. The healthcare system should strive to aid the patient's connection to peer support and group education that includes self-management and skill building. The key learning points for this section are that the patient is at the center of the healthcare team. Understanding and supporting the roles and responsibility of patients and their family or caregivers encourages shared decision making. The healthcare system can be designed to provide opportunities for patient participation, empowering patients to take an active role on their healthcare team. After watching the three minute YouTube video, please reflect on what does patient-centered care mean to you? We would enjoy reading your comments on the forum discussion board.